Okay, so what I'm going to cover is um, the history of the SDGs, a little bit about collaboration reporting, data development and global platform. Click again. So what is the history of the SDGs? Well, it started quite a long time ago, particularly in the lifetime of data science. So in September 2000, the UN General Assembly made what was called the Millennium Declaration. I, I suspect that some of you in the room were very young and wouldn't have remembered this. Um, and we initiated something across the world called the Millennium Development Goals. So these were goals to try and achieve in 15 years from 2000 to 2015, um, an international effort essentially to reduce poverty. And they were aimed firmly at developing countries. There were eight of these goals. Um, they were eradicating extreme poverty and hunger, achieving universal primary education, promoting gender equality and empowering women, very important for us, most of us in the room here today, reducing child mortality, improving maternal health, combating HIV, AIDS, malaria and other similar diseases, ensuring environmental sustainability and in particular developing a global partnership for development. So 2015 came closer and there was some progress made to these goals but really I think the general view is that there was not enough progress made. It was quite a, a, a big initiative and it's very difficult to get countries to come together to work in this way. So as 2015 came closer, Ban Ki-moon then launched, who was the Secretary General of the UN, launched an initiative to build up more momentum for the next 15 years. And the member states decided that they were going to um, determine another set of goals to build on the MDGs to take this work forward. So there were 27 members of a high-level panel and um, in 2012, and this was actually chaired by David Cameron. And there was a call for consultation this time because I think there was a feeling that the Millennium Development Goals hadn't been widely enough consulted on. So this was a much more inclusive and open approach than previously. And again, this I think is important when you're thinking about potentially setting these big challenges for data science for measurement is that there are very few things that any of us can do on our own anymore because these problem spaces are very big. So I thought that was me, and I thought I hadn't got any uh, sound today. Um, so initially there was a recommendation for 12 goals and 50 indicators, and that was essentially the first draft of the SDGs. So then moving on, um, the Prime Minister then set up a high-level panel of Whitehall directors to support the coordination of the SDGs. And in 2013, um, asked the National Statistician at ONS to coordinate the input using the government statistical service. So this was a very important moment for the Office for National Statistics because this meant that we were able to give technical advice into the development of these indicators from a very early stage. We can make sure that the statistical needs are taken care of, we can make sure that there is a consistent approach to the measurement of these goals, and we're able to give practical guidance to government departments in the development of the goals. We did one feasibility study into goal 16, and I'll show you if you don't know what the goals are um, shortly. And um, from that work across government, it was agreed that the ONS would have the responsibility for measuring and reporting the SDGs for the whole of the UK. So then um, there was a Sustainable Development Summit in New York, September 2015. And this is where the 193 member states of the UN accepted an important resolution, which was transforming our world, the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. If you want to read it in detail, all of this is available on the UN website. But the resolution stated that these goals and targets are to stimulate action over the next 15 years in areas of critical importance for people, planet, prosperity, peace and partnership. And the panel then announced 17 goals but 169 associated targets. So this is a phenomenally huge measurement challenge. And the, res the resolution also stated that these need to be integrated, indivisible and balance the three dimensions of sustainable development, 
economic, social and environmental. It also coined the phrase, which is, I think, a really lovely and short, encompassing statement about the SDGs, which is that their goal is to leave no one behind. So they are really intended to be fully international. And here they are. And the other reason I picked to um, talk about these today is because I think they're very cheerful. They're always very cheerful colours, especially for a, a Friday. So I'm not going to read them out, but we'll just look at, we'll, we'll, uh, if you just look through there, basically these um, 17 goals cover, I think, what's really important for all of us on the planet. You know, we are, or should be, all concerned that there is no poverty. We want to make sure that, you know, our oceans are, are healthy and, you know, we hear lots of stories on the news about them being full of plastic at the moment. We want to make sure that everybody has a good education. So this is a, this is a really, um, I think, important for, for us in the UK. It's important internationally, but it's also important, the leaving no one behind is also important to make sure that we are doing our best to help developing nations because it's many of the developing countries where actually collecting data and measuring these goals and having them adopted by the UN puts um, the right type of pressure on governments to improve quality of life and the quality of the planet that we live on. So, this one's coming up. So, obviously, underneath the goals, there are a whole number of targets and indicators. But there's a lot of um, scientific and statistical strength behind the way these indicators are being developed. The measurement process here is really quite formal and uh, the, the methods which are used have to be peer-reviewed and accepted internationally. So having a look here at how that works, each of the goals has an umbrella title and the one which is shown here is goal number 10. Got success for goal number 10 will mean that there are reduced inequalities for people. So that's, I think, also relevant when we're all sitting here, as the majority of us are ladies in the room, thinking about uh, equality, particularly in gender and the importance of everybody being able to work in these scientific, technical and data science fields. So each of these um, targets um, is, is underpinned by indicators. And again, I'm not going to, you, could, you will have the slides, so if you want to look in more detail, you can, I won't go through them. But it's really important that each of the targets is, 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 met, is backed up by something which is measurable and reportable. In some cases, because this is quite a, a huge undertaking, some of the indicators can be used towards multiple targets. And I think there's one of them here, which is, um, Go, it's the target six along here. So the enhanced representation for developing countries can also be used towards the peace and inequalities target. So this framework is being set up in quite a formal, rigorous academic way um, to actually make sure that these, these goals can be reported against internationally. So how does this actually work in practice? Oh, sorry, I'm not... My slide's not clicking. Reporting, here we go. Okay. So basically, all of the data that we find has to be reported. And to make these targets stick internationally and across the UN, they have to be followed up and reviewed. So they have to be... It's made clear to each member state that their government is responsible for reporting these targets. And... We are expecting and hoping that effective decisions will then be made about improving development. Um, and also, the reason that we, the ONS is very pleased to be involved with this work is that actually um, it's, it's, Im it's improving, um, if you like, the general consideration of how we are working to modernise our statistical system. Because a lot of these targets um, are going to be measured using new data sources and new techniques. And our, our job, if you like, is to bring statistical rigour to this measurement using these new data sources. And going back to what I said at the beginning of my presentation, this is where we all have to really think hard about how we're doing what we call 
data science. There are many people who are doing data science um, who have come from the, the sort of what I, I the, the sort of web design generation, the fact that you've got as much power in this laptop now as you used to have in the mainframe, the fact that you've got open source tools. There are a lot of people who are doing some form of data science and they are um, packages for visualization and we can make things look very, very attractive. But there are a lot of people, and they won't be the people in this room, who are pulling data together and drawing a pie chart or drawing a, a graph or having some sort of whizzy 3D representation of what they've found by bringing this data together, where if you actually were to look under the surface from a mathematical perspective, from a statistical perspective, you'll find that there are two perennial problems. And the perennial problems are a lack of rigorous understanding of the quality of the data which is available and the assumption that um, what you have done by applying your algorithm to this combination of data has actually given you the right result. And this is something that we all need to think about very carefully and all of you here need to think about this in your work. If you pull data together, you need to know what its quality is, what, where it's come from, what its quality is. When you combine it with other data, you need to think very, very carefully about what the result of that analysis is showing you. And this is where we all need to go back to um, people who've been working in the field of mathematics and science for a very long time um, in maths and statistics, because there are, so, there, are, there are a lot of techniques available there to really allow you to question the quality of the result that you have shown. So I advise you all very strongly to think carefully not in your own work, but also think very carefully about things which are presented to you as though they are facts. Because in fact, um, I've only been at the ONS um, for three years because I was brought in to do a complete modernization. Um, and one of our very well-established, long-established, very notable statistician said to me um, at a staff event we ran after about six months, this chap stood up and he said, we publish the truth. And I said, no, we don't. <laughs> we publish the best approximation to the truth that we can reach, and we also caveat it, if we're doing our jobs properly, with the limitations of what we're able to publish. And that's something that's not just applicable to statistics, it's actually applicable to all data science. So this follow-up and review is important at multiple levels. Okay, so UK data. Um, we are working very hard to pull together the data that we need to measure the SDGs. And we have, um, it's not live here, we have a live reporting platform and I would encourage you to go and have a look at it if you want to see how we're, how we're getting along. This platform was created, um, and, and, and this is quite, this will, this will sound maybe a, a bit of a so what statement for many of you in the room, um, but this platform was created um, using open source software in collaboration with the United States. Well, those of you who are under 30 will go, well, so what, what does that mean? The, the importance here is that um, government, and particularly at ONS, is now working really hard to use the latest technologies which are available, the latest techniques which are available. Um, in maybe 10 years ago, there's absolutely no way that a UK public body would have used open source software. It would be, it would just be, you have got to be joking. That's just for, you know, academics, geeks and students. Um, and so what we actually did across government was we paid an awful lot of um, people an awful lot of money to buy these sort of pre-cooked software packages that looked very nice um, and it spent an awful lot of you or maybe your parents tax on that. So this is a really important move forward in terms of our being more innovative and it's one of the things which I think underpins the, the growth in data science is that, is that anybody can pick up a laptop, anybody can pick up these open source tools and, and people can now, you know, in, 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 the, in the garage as it were or in your bedroom you can do work which previously wasn't able to be done in very large corporations with huge amounts of funding 10 or 20 years ago. And that is really, really exciting and one of the things which opens up a whole field of opportunities for all of us. So I encourage you to go and have a look at that and see how we're, how we're getting on. Um, it looks something like this when you, it's the classic red, amber, green. I don't know if anybody's ever going to reinvent red, amber, green. I, I might not want to do it's pink, purple and blue, but. 
But anyway, here's our, here's our red, red, amber, green. It, it shows what's reported online. It shows where we've got things in pro progress and it shows where we're exploring data sources. And the data sources that we are exploring here are very, very diverse set of data. So you can go in there, you can click on it, you won't need any instructions on how to do it and have a look at what we're doing. But the other really exciting thing um, for me is actually the work that we're doing collaborating internationally. So um, our involvement has, has been growing um, really, um, I would say, over the last 15 years. But just recently, we, we have actually now a dedicated um, team, of, a small team of people who are working with Rwanda, Ghana and Kenya um, on a one-to-one -one basis. And we're providing staff to go over and help them build their capability and capacity in computing statistics and data science. And we're, we're also, um, I've been chairing a, a committee of the UN for the last 12 months. It's a global working group for the global platform and bringing together um, different countries from across the world to try and do something um, which is going to be quite special for data sharing between statistical institutions and their trusted partners. So what we are actually working on uh, and in fact, I was back, at, I was at the UN and we got the go ahead to do this for the next um, 18 to 24 months to build a proof of concept is a platform which will allow trusted partners, trusted data, trusted methods and trusted learning. Now, what this means is that um, we have, you know, we, we have limited, um, if you like, capability in the international statistical system to use big data sources effectively. We have limited numbers of people who are proficient in programming in R who can use geospatial data. And so what we're trying to do is to make sure that we, we combine our resources so that we can all measure our economies and societies better, including the SDGs, which is the primary driver for this work and for bringing people together around data and techniques. So the idea is that there will be a collaboration which might be, say, between Mexico, Canada, and Indonesia to look at something like scanner data from supermarkets to see how we can measure prices better, to look at how we can measure economies better. There will be another collaboration which might be between the Netherlands, uh, the United Kingdom, and the United Ar Arab Emirates. These are just examples, um, which will be looking at how we can use mobile phone data. Mobile phone data is a really rich source of data if you want to try and understand your population. It shows you anonymized forms of the data, obviously, show you where people are, where they're traveling. We've had some great success looking, building new forms of tourism statistics by looking at where phones are moving around the world. And we're very lucky in the United Kingdom because we have the Digital Economy Act, so we actually have the right for statistics and research purposes to get data now from other government departments, which ironically previously we weren't able to do, and also to get data from commercial and other organizations. So we're really, really moving forward in our ability, and the art of the possible here is, is endless. But by collaborating in this way, we're hoping that we can build a standard method which will be peer reviewed, which then all countries can use, for example, to measure tourism. And we have specific um, challenges at the moment, which won't surprise you, um, around trade and migration, um, where we're being asked to actually improve the way that we um, tell government how many people are in the country and how much trade we're doing with other countries, obviously fueled by um, underpinning information to help uh, make decisions around Brexit. So I won't um, say a lot more because I'd, I'd like to leave time for questions and we have the panel coming up. Um, but I would um, encourage you to have a look in particular at this work that we're doing here. One of the other things that we're doing is we are partnering very strongly with academia, we're partnering with private companies because our, our work, if you like, to bring in this wealth of data is that we can actually do any analysis that we deem ethical, responsible and in the public interest and providing that we're open and transparent about what we're doing. So there's a, there's, there are also an other initiatives that we're working on which are about linking, matching, and anonymizing data to make it available for research purposes. So if any of you uh, have a particular interest in um, a data science topic or a project that you would like to do, and you feel that there is some data, particularly public sector data, that you would like to get hold of, you're welcome to get in touch with us and we'll see whether we can 
help give you access to that. There's lots of things that we can do working together. Um, the other event, if you're really a serious data person, that I would commend to you, the first one was last year, is the World Data Forum. So if you can get funding to go to one conference this year, um, my recommendation would be to go to the World Data Forum in October. It's being held in Dubai this year. And I think with that, I will sign off and see if there are any questions. Thank you very much.